And I think you need to unmute. Yes, thank you. I'm sorry. You know, after all our practice this morning and being on time and everything, and then I completely lapsed it in the moment. Um, thank you. Thanks very much for the intro. And hi, hi, everyone. Uh, our um, discussion today takes a little step back from, I think, some of the discussions that we've been having this morning, uh, which have been great. Um, and we just want to move to a slightly more abstracted level around uh, the same discussion, really, about how we're drawing together, how we're making sure that we're sharing information in a way that is uh, sensible, that is uh, communicative, easy to communicate um, and that has a good a good narrative or a worthwhile narrative around it and and one of the first things that we want to talk about is just this idea of a, uh, a VUCA will which which I I'll be honest I only heard about uh, a few months back for the first time but uh, and so if, if everybody's very well aware of this I apologize but really this idea that you know that the world has been uh, kind of volatile, change very rapid and uncertain. It's been uncertain, uh, unpredictable, sorry, and it's been uncertain. And um, the present is unclear and the future is quite uncertain. Uh, it's been complex, it's been ambiguous. And I think that these are words that we've we've all kind of come to know and come to feel over the last number of years, but, but really we're actually shifting away from that. And that's really how the world was. Uh, and there's, there's a new acronym, of course, everybody loves an acronym. There's a new acronym that's kind of making the rounds at the moment, which is that it's more banny now, instead of being Buka, it's more banny, which is that it's brittle. I think we're, we're recognizing, and certainly I think the last year and a half have brought this home incredibly strongly, uh, that systems break and they can break like this, you know, uh, and we need to be more aware of these sudden shifts and sudden seismic events, if you like. I know there's always a lot of geologists on the call, so I'm going to uh, casually throw in geologically, geological terms and misuse them the whole way through. Um, it's also anxious. It's very anxious for us. I think a lot of us are dealing with a lot of kind of trying to understand what the world might look like at the moment, but also for our stakeholders. Uh, and certainly, I know that in the mining industry, um, we've seen in South Africa uh, and I, you know, we're seeing all around the world, certainly South America a lot, there's this increasing anxiety around, well, what does the future look like for me? Um, and how can I, as uh, somebody in a vulnerable situation, navigate some of that? And it can be quite difficult to remain positive uh, and it can be quite difficult to understand whether you have any ability to make decisions. And part of this is because it's become more non-linear. Uh, and so we recognize and can see that the world's kind of um, cause and consequence structure that we're so used to, uh, of course, hasn't gone away completely, but it's certainly uh, not as easily accessible as it uh, maybe once was. And particularly, I think when we're dealing in social performance and stakeholders, and that's some of what we've been hearing this morning as well. Um, you know, we, we're, we're trying, to, trying to control and trying to manage for a space that's really, uh, really fluffy and really, um, really nuanced and careful. And finally, it can feel incomprehensible. You know, this nonlinear nature uh, can make things seem genuinely random and, and seem like they're jumping about. And I guess that what this comes down to for all of us uh, is how do we create a space where we are better able to respond and better able to understand some of these things in a world that's shifting all the time. Um, and you'll, you'll forgive me some bad puns as we go through this when I talk about shift happens. But let's talk about what this means for us as businesses, uh, as the mining industry, as various other industries. <coughs> One is it means that there's, there's this increasing accountability and, and, and there's a real shift uh, towards allegiance um, of companies that present a fuller value to society. And it was interesting what Lawrence was saying now about the IPA, uh, sorry, not about the IPA, about LCA. Um, you know, that, that, that customers and customers of customers, and we'll come back to this, but they really are demanding that uh, organizations, mining in particular, but 
many organizations are behaving uh, in a way that they feel is more responsible. They're also tagged to that, obviously amplifying their voices. Uh, you know, we, <laughs> we love to jump on, on about how social media is the amplification effect here, but it really, it really has been, it's been incredible. And those amplified voices also mean that people with a more niche ax to grind, if you like, uh, are able to get their voice out much more. And so that's, that's led, I think, recently we can see to a lot of the um, increased tensions uh, that exist uh, and a lot more of the kind of uh, polarization of people's opinions and, and, and views because you want to be, not want to be, but if you want to get heard, you kind of keep getting pushed out to the polls. And we've got a challenge and this is an interesting one to put out obviously with this, the group the group sitting around the table here, but this question around is ESG just another sticker? And I think, you know, that's a big challenge for all of us is how do we move from ESG being this thing where you check the boxes and you follow the standards to actually, guys, this has to be a central part of what we do. This has to be deeply ingrained in who we are as organizations, as companies, as minds, and as people. And I think that's been a big challenge if we, if we think back 20, 30, 40 years when we talk about sustainability uh, and how it has moved slightly. But at the end of the day, for many companies and many minds, it's still, here's what we do. We produce, we create this metal, we sell it, et cetera, et cetera. We dig a big hole in the ground. And we've got to do this ESG stuff because you know investors want to see it and our stakeholders want to see it. But is it central to who we are? And um, hero-based responses is always one that I think is difficult to, uh, to get across briefly. Those people who know me will know I'm, I'm, I'm very anti-heroes. And um, heroes are great in a in an immediate crisis, but they don't avoid crises. Okay, and I think that that's the key. Uh, and we've seen this certainly now during during uh, COVID, is there's a lot of people jumping up to be heroes, but actually not making systemic changes. Right, and I think that that's uh, that's quite central. So we need that ability to build a stable system rather than only respond as heroes in the crisis. And of course, we know that there are these increasing societal fault lines, again, throwing in a little bit of uh, poorly used geological terms there. Um, but really, those fault lines, are they exist. We're all very, very aware of them. What we aren't aware of and we don't know is at what point do they, do they shift, do they crack? I think we're seeing it more and more. I think we uh, we all somewhere in our gut know that this is happening more and more and more, but does it happen in a bigger way? Does it happen in a way that really starts shutting things down? Uh, and we've had, certainly in South Africa, we've had a couple of mines recently that have uh, had to stop production for periods of time due to societal um, uh, increases of violence or, or other protests and challenges. Uh, and I know that this is a global phenomenon. Um, and so finally, we need to understand that all of these things are interwoven. Uh, and so uh, once more, a poor pun, but about just the world is a mesh. Yeah? It's both a mess and a mesh. Uh, and we've got to start understanding much better the uh, interconnectedness of all of these things. Um, and I, I think, and this comes back to what I was talking about, about the, the uh, earnings in ESG, is we, we've decoupled them. So we've said, look, earnings, that's important for us. And ESG, that's kind of on the side. And it's also important, but it's important differently. And actually, we need to start drawing those back together. So the first way that we need to do that, <coughs> well, the first thing that's important is looking at the scope and understanding that it's not simply about our core operations or even our core operations and value chain, but in fact, our community and social investment, our public advocacy and policy, partnerships and collaboration, all of this is the scope of what we do. Uh, um, you know, and we spoke earlier, somebody mentioned about, uh, I think it was Teresa mentioned about large mines and small mines. Absolutely true. You know, the big mines throw lots of money right across this chain. Uh, but the fact is every mine needs to be thinking about this entire chain because, and every business needs to be thinking about this chain because how do we fit in across that? And we're being challenged by a lot of people who care, and they care a lot. 
you know, government is challenging more and more and more and, and uh, you know, is, is pushing back harder um, on irresponsible practices. Um, <coughs> and in many cases, uh, you know, um, we're seeing new regulations coming up and we need to be thinking about future regulations our customers and our customers' customers. And that comes back to that kind of, uh, Lawrence, Lawrence thinks about the um, LCA, about the life cycle analysis. You know, we've been working a little bit with the, the platinum industry as an example, where uh, the manufacturers are being challenged by their customers. And so they're pushing that up the line, right back to the mines to say, guys, you know, what are you doing? I mean, how uh, are you, um, are you mining responsibly? Are you approaching all of this responsibly? And of course, you know, we can talk about things like uh, platinum and uh, some of the larger larger mines, but when you've got children mining cobalt, you know, that's used in all of our cell phones, we're not tracking that very well. And so that's where I think that uh, um, initiatives like uh, Source Certain, I think are amazing, you know, and a varied number of them and very, very important is that we need to be able to look at that entire chain and see where things are. Investors are pushing harder uh, for ESG, and that's, yeah, there's responsible investment, uh, but actually investors in total, and we'll come back to it, but, but it's, it's fundamental to them because it reduces our risk, uh, it covers our exposure, et cetera. Um, activists and advocacy and civil society, and all of these, this is the problem, is that they all see value in different parts of that chain and in different places. All right, and so we come back to needing a couple of key things. One of the things we need is a common language. Uh, we need objectives that aren't exclusionary. <clears throat> Sorry, and when I talk about a common language, Geraldine brought it up right at the front. There's so many standards, okay? And we can all pick a standard and that's great, but actually we need a way to talk across those standards as well uh, and to collect to collectively discuss these things. We need a, a guiding star and I put moral compass in that because I, I, I'm aware that uh, you know, as soon as you start bringing morals in, people go, well, that's not that's not about business. You know, business isn't about that. Oh, it's about morals, but it's really about producing or mining or digging big holes. And but actually, we do need that. And it's important because it does help us reduce risk. It does help us increase transparency. And it does allow us, by having a guiding star, to walk our own route just in the same direction. I thought that was a lovely way that uh, Teresa mentioned it. She said, we're all moving the same way, or we should all be moving the same way. And so we end up needing this kind of meta framework that translates between all of these codes. And I think some of it comes back to the core of what it is that we're doing. And uh, we had uh, Dr. Raj Abedian speak at a, a conference earlier this year, and he, he had this lovely phrase. He said, the purpose of an economy is to ensure human flourishing. Um, and of course we can, you know, we can say, well, environmental flourishing and all of those things come under the banner because if, if the world is not flourishing, we will not flourish uh, once we take a broader view. And, and so one of the ways that we can try to help these uh, different uh, stakeholders or different people who care kind of see this value and understand this whole picture is by drawing it together into a couple of clear lenses and understanding clearer strategies and goals, having some better visibility of the data and being able to tell a stronger and, and a better narrative, one that's more defensible with actual data, with proper assurance behind it. We've been pretty good on this on the financial side, but pretty poor on this on the ESG side, if we're honest. And recoupling those and bringing those back together is central. And so this is a drum I've been banging and we've been banging for a few years now. Um, but the sustainable development goals really cover that off very well. They cover all of the ESG uh, activities. They also cover financial activities. They cover human well-being. Um, they really are a collective that draws all of this value together very nicely. I am conscious of time, so I'm going to skim through a little bit, but I think there's some very key <coughs> business imperatives to this as well around uh, being able to reduce risk and secure uh, business value and opportunity. Uh, responding to stakeholders, strengthening license to operate, um, improving trust and creating effective partnerships, and a lot of internal synergies that come out of thinking about what we do in this way. 
And so there's, there are various toolkits uh, around this. Um, one of the, the key things for any toolkit, we believe, is that you've got to draw together data mapping, the narrative and strategy all into a central view, into a single view around unified value. Um, because otherwise you end up in the same problem. You just end up with lots of different silos and these guys are making money and these guys are doing ESG and these guys are doing community stuff. Uh, and actually we don't get a, a, a clear understanding of what it is that we want to do. <coughs> and so if we think about that unified value framework, we could think about, or we should think about how we can do materiality assessments and that materiality flows into the framework. It says, well, where are we going to focus? And where are the, the areas of risk that we must be conscious of, the categories, the bucket zones, whatever we want to call them? But where are the, where are the groups of risks uh, that we need to be aware of? And then once we're aware of that, and we've shared that, we've done that with our stakeholders, we've engaged them on that materiality assessment, we've got to be, able, they're going to say, okay, well, what are you doing about it now? And so we've got to be able to present this activity in a clear uh, manner, that um, shows our activities on an ongoing basis. It shows our balance against risk. And we're able to present that and make that visible to increase transparency, but also internally can, uh, within companies can start to guide ourselves and start to make sure that we are thinking about the whole range of activity. And all of this comes down, you know, we've got to have, uh, we use the SDG mapping to do this. Um, but really what we want is this kind of uh, e and ESG narrative, so economic and uh, ESG all drawn together in a single way so that our executives uh, and our, um, our companies and our stakeholders, uh, our investors, our local communities, everybody's having a view uh, through the same lens to understand what is going on. And in that way, we can now start to have some real uh, conversations and discussions um, at a much richer level so that people aren't being left out uh, and we're not doing it for me or for you we're doing it for all of us and we're aiming towards this kind of this common good idea <coughs> just some examples really and um, i guess about how we can start thinking about this our contribution to a prosperous south africa in by using the sdgs we're able to see where some of our focus areas are uh, we're then able to deep dive into some of those by using them as this unifying framework and collectivizing, you can start to look at, okay, well, what have we been doing over the last number of years? Where has our focus been and where has it shifted over the previous number of years? Um, are we more focused on economic, social, but now we're drawing all of these together. So uh, I'm very anti uh, the kind of the drive that for businesses must just be for the common good. Uh, if a business isn't financially sustainable, it doesn't work anyway. So you have to combine these things and you need to be considering all of them. And if you're not considering all of them together, then uh, you're going to focus on certain areas and miss the boat. And you will have different people focusing on different areas. Um, and I think that many of us will know, many of the people on this call will know and will have observed uh, challenges around that, around these kind of silos that get created. So how do you start to bring that across? Again, we think that the the goals are really a good way to be able to bring that together. Um, and to be able to break that down and bring that into economics uh, and see what's happening on the economic front. And then also how that links again back to the SDGs. And then you can bring that out into really well packaged um, and well structured views to say, all right, let us deep dive on each of these things. And so to be able to again use this kind of unifying framework that we could drive down, uh, dive down into, for example, green investments, and we could click on, on the SDG there and then get an unpacking of well, what's happening on that SDG, what are our different uh, initiatives, and drill down. All of this data, once you've got it into a framework, actually presenting it becomes a, a much simpler um, uh, situation. And I think, you know, a number of organizations, certainly we're working with a number of organizations, but there, there are many roads uh, at the moment. A number of organizations are starting down this road. Probably one that's gone quite far in, uh, in the mining industry, I think everybody's reasonably aware, but is Anglo-American. There's a very good case study uh, that was done last year um, by the Global Compact, which is available 
to go and have a look at how they've taken their, their sustainability, sustainable mining strategy. They've mapped the SDGs across their whole organization and they've been able to use that to say, what are we doing? How are we achieving? And they use the SDGs on an ongoing basis now to monitor development and improvement. Um, and as I say, there's a great, uh, the links there, but I, I'm sure as this gets emailed out, you'll be able to follow it. Um, a really good uh, deep dive on how they've, they've done it as one example of, uh, of good practice. Um, and so I'll leave you with one last really bad pun, which is let's go get Meshi. Uh, Fantastic. Thank you so much, Zach. Um, shift happens. I think it's going to be my new <laughs> life motto. Um, the first question that I'm <laughs> in here is the SDGs are massive and also conflicting. So how do you navigate this? Uh, I, I know it's difficult to ask second questions or follow up questions here, but I'm not sure how they're conflicting. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't have the questionnaire in front of me. Um, I'm thinking that some of some of the SDGs are at least you have to focus on one or the other, or can you focus on all of them at the same time? Uh, well, okay, that, so that comes into an interesting point. I'm not convinced that it's about um, focusing on one to the exclusion of another. Okay, so I, I, sorry, I have a clarification. Here. Okay, go for it. <laughs> if you only solved climate change, you negatively impact on human rights. I'm sorry, say that again, if you only? If you only solved climate change, you may negatively impact on human rights. Yeah. That's true. If you pick one and focused on that, then you may negatively impact on others. If you take a look at the whole mesh, then you will do what you can in the spaces where you can. And you will be aware, at least, of where there are negative impacts. Okay? And so you're able to now look at context and understand the whole context. And I think that's, I'm glad that the question came up because that's exactly our base proposition here is you can't just look at a single issue. You shouldn't be, this is part of, I think, what's led us to the space where we are, into this kind of banny world, is because we're all trying to solve, hero solve, single specific problems. We're not looking at the system, at the whole picture, at the underlying nuances. And I think that that is where the SDGs can really help us to draw all of that together. We have uh, Robin waiting for us now. Okay. I want to ask a, a short, a, easy question. Is the mining industry better or worse when it comes to the systemic thinking than other industries? Uh, you see now that's, so the mining industry is not a monolith, uh, unfortunately, you know. I think it's been my experience that the companies that are good at it are really good at it and I think are uh, well ahead. I think some other businesses are, are miles behind. I don't want to have a dig at finance again, but I'm going to. I think finance is miles behind banking. But uh, I do think my, the mining industry is really uh, in spaces very well ahead. Mm -hmm. But it's, you know, it's such a, 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 um, a heterogeneous industry. You know, there, there's still so much filth that goes on in the industry. There's no way about it. And um, I think we're getting better in mm -hmm. general. Great. Zach, thank you so much. You win the prize for puns, is what Sarah is saying. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Amazing. A round of applause. Thanks very Zach, much. So much.